Hey y'all, it's uh, Vinny, and for this video, I have the model that was permed with a very tight perm. We did a tight uh, exothermic wave, and because of that, the curls are ultra firm. They are beyond true to rod size. I mean, like, look at this. We did blue rods. You take that hair and you go to spring it, the curl goes right back. So let's say that this client uh, comes in and she was unsure of what she wanted, and she goes, you know, that perm is way too tight. I don't like this. Can I have a looser look or can I go back to the straight texture? Well, the good news is, chemically speaking, for the most part, a lot of perms could be reversed. Now, let me just say right here that it is very important you do a correct thorough hair analysis. Choosing the wrong type of solution or the wrong method could seriously damage hair and you could end up with a lawsuit. Disclaimer here, I am a professional, so please, if you try to try any of this, do so at your own risk and know that hair breakage is always a risk. So one of the methods I'm going to be trying on this mannequin, and again, this is an experiment, I'm going to be trying to use a thio smoother. So again, we use ammonium thioglycolate to curl hair with a perm, and you can also use that same chemical to straighten hair. Because thio breaks the bonds in hair, when you're not using a rod or a roller, which is your tool, because remember, with regular permanent waving, you're taking the hair, you're wrapping it when it's wet, or if you're lotion wrapping it dry, you're applying a perm solution, which contains ammonium thioglycolate, and you're waiting until approximately 50% of the hair's bonds are broken. And we check that with the rod test. So 50% bonds broken gives you a curl or a wave, depending on the tool and the wrapping method. But let's say you just take those rods out. What happens if you just squirted perm solution on the hair and did nothing? Well, you would relax the hair because you're breaking the bonds, so you can use this chemical to either, you know, remove some of the curl or the wave. So like, let's say you have this product and this is a straightener that I'm gonna be using. Let's say that you wanted to just remove a little bit of the curl. Well, you would make that assessment while you comb it through. When you start to see the curl start to dissipate, you would then do a little strand test or they do the knot test. And if you notice the curl is becoming more of a wave, you can take it off and neutralize and see where you're at now and that will give you just a curl reduction. Now, if you wanna completely eliminate the curl, know that you're not gonna fully straighten the hair until it's 100% straight. That is because with every relaxer, if you go over 70 to 80%, usually 80 or more, uh, it's the risky method because at 80%, the hair is pretty straight, and if you go more than 80% to 100% of the hair being smooth, you've broken so many bonds in the hair, the hair starts to denature, and just by the weight of the own hair, that strand snaps and gums off. So you never want to overprocess this. It's better to be a little bit more on the wavier side than pin straight and explain that to the client because a perm is still a heck of a chemical service. Adding on another chemical service, it could be very damaging. For the most part, a lot of the cream thios are very gentle for the hair, um, whereas relaxers you would never use with thio because that can cause breakage. I'm going to do a test section on the other side of the mannequin. Now there's actually a really good YouTuber. She's really cool, very kind lady. Um, I'm going to link her video down below. And for educational purposes, I think the video is phenomenal and it teaches a lot of lessons. You know, sometimes stylists, they have an off day. Maybe the stylist didn't communicate what the client wanted and as a result, her perm was too curly. And that would be ideal for, you know, this client that the perm is way too curly. She comes in, this is not what I wanted. Well, what you could do is then apply a thio smoother to try to relax some of the curl or even use a regular perm, which I'll also show on another quadrant, regular perm solution, comb it through with this shampoo bowl and wait until the desired amount of curls relaxed. So there's different options that we have here. Uh, and again, you know, this is a great corrective technique. So I'm gonna go charge this battery up. I'm gonna go set up, I'm gonna wash the hair and I'm gonna uh, condition it with a light conditioner because she is a little naughty. And then I'm gonna apply the Thio Smoother and we're gonna see what happens uh, with Thio over perm. Okay, so I have my straightening cream that I put in the bowl. I am using the Smooth operator straightening cream for color treated hair. Now, I know that becomes an issue because when you're selecting a product, ideally go for the gentlest solution when you are working on permed hair. That is because permed hair is not virgin hair and would want to treat it much the same as if it was colored because permed hair can have as much as two or three grades of porosity. So if your hair is a natural, you know, level one porosity virgin hair, permed hair can be a level two or a level three possibly even higher if it's done incorrectly. And because of that, the perm is gonna uh, straighten out quicker than as if it was natural. So if you used regular uh, you know, straightening cream on it or extra strength, heaven forbid, you would end up with a potential mess and a lawsuit. 
Um, it smells pretty bad. Although I noticed that perm solution kind of smells worse for some reason. So I'm gonna start, I'm gonna take a section and I'm gonna start underneath. And what you're gonna do is you are never gonna apply directly to the scalp. You're gonna apply it about an, uh, half an inch away and then you're gonna comb it. The combing is gonna spread it and when you're combing, it will get that you know zone one area. So I'm gonna start and I'm gonna apply. And this is on you know freshly shampooed hair. You want to make sure you use a, a clarifying shampoo because if your client has been swimming in you know chlorinated water, that is a sure as heck way to get their hair to melt off. So really make sure you apply fully. Use your fingers to spread, and use a comb to comb through. And what this is doing is the solution that you're putting on, the cream, is gonna deliver the thio to the hair. The thio is gonna start breaking those bonds again. And what you're gonna do is rinse. So this typically, an application of thio straightener can take anywhere from 10 minutes to 20 minutes. Uh, but again, that is not a minimum or maximum. That is just a timed range. You wanna be quick and efficient when applying this. Also know that, you know, because thio is a reducing agent, if your client does have color on her hair or a demi-permanent, it will fade it. Now, ideally, if you do things correctly, you're gonna minimize it. I one time had a client with beautiful red hair color, and when I was applying the thio smoother, it looked like it was coming all out, and I was like, oh my goodness, she is gonna have so much hair color fading. Uh, but the good news was, surprisingly, whatever it did, the color absorbed back in, I rinsed, I neutralized, and is it, it was as if she didn't even have any kind of color removing at all. So again, this really depends on a lot of things. And it's just something you have to see on a case by case basis. So if you can see already, the curl is dropping a little bit, which is a good sign. So I'm gonna keep combing and checking to see how much of the curl is removed. But still applying in a methodical manner. And you also want to explain to the client that after you do this procedure, you don't want to be doing any, you know, more harsh chemicals. I definitely would not recommend doing any kind of bleaching service. Hair color, if you're careful, maybe do a 10 volume. But remember that on highly porous hair, that 10 volume can work more like a 20 or slightly higher. And it depends on a lot of factors. So always be careful with that. And the cream, because it is thicker, it's a thicker viscosity, it also keeps the, uh, the hair in a straighter position. So that is really good when you're combing it. You can even use a processing cap to you know, keep the hair uh, contained and moist. You don't want this to essentially dry out and you do not ever want to use a flat iron when you have thio in the hair or uh, a dryer because that is just not recommended at all. The chemical is already high in pH enough, and you don't need anything more aggressive. Thio straighteners have a pH range. They could be a pH of potentially 10, 10.5. Very strong chemical. Some of them may be for color treated hair. It's probably more like a, an eight or a nine. Depends on a lot of things. What I wish and I would like to see done in our industry is uh, more uh, transparency with chemicals and with pH. I would love a law that would make it so you have to put the pH on all products, shampoo, perms, so it really gives you an idea of what pH you're using with, and you can make informed decisions as a hairdresser. Because as you know, something could say acid wave, but that is meaningless. What's not to say there's an issue in the batch, and you'll have one batch that is more um, alkaline than others. And I know I'm probably using the wrong kind of comb, I just wanna get this product on there, get it processing, and as it's relaxing, I'm gonna go and get a broader tooth comb and then comb uh, more. Really work that in there. 
You wanna be gentle too with combing. You don't wanna be tearing it through. If you're having a little bit of snags, wait for the product to do its job and then do some combing. And it's kind of hard to see, but if you look carefully, you can see that there is a purple tinge uh, to the solution. That is because this mannequin had a little bit of hair color and the color was a purple base. Now, ideally, what I would recommend if your client is really adamant on getting hair color, same day, you could do semi-permanent color. That's not gonna hurt anything. Semi-permanent color is not oxidative. There is no ingredient that will you know, mess with the thio. It does not get hydrogen peroxide on the hair. So you can do that. You know, maybe two weeks after the thio, if the hair is in good condition and you strand test, that's the keyword, you may do a demi-permanent color. I would recommend uh, not using one with MEA. Do one that contains ME, uh, AMP like Chromastics from Tom Dispenza is a fantastic uh, chemical to use in your tool arsenal. Okay, so I'm just applying like so. And because this is a mannequin, I'm gonna try to just get the edges because I know it will not work like a human head would. A human head has heat, so it makes it a lot easier with a mannequin if you're doing a demo. My own little thing is that you really wanna work this in a lot better to compensate for the lack of heat. It's also known that with a mannequin, you might have to process a little bit longer until you get the desired straightness. As you can see, the hair is already starting to relax. So I'm gonna go start a timer for about 20 minutes. I'm gonna check it at 10 minutes, and then if it is relaxed thoroughly, I'm gonna go uh, rinse and neutralize. Okay, so I did the check, and in about 20 minutes, this mannequin is actually ready. The mannequin was a little resistant, but it looks like a sufficient amount of the curl has been removed. Again, you do not want to make the hair 100% straight because that will cause breakage and the hair will actually come off uh, on the comb. So if you can see with this mannequin with a wide tooth color comb, I can actually comb the hair uh, decently straight, which is usually the first sign. So if I comb like this, I can see that a lot of the curl has been removed and it slides through sufficiently easy. The ends are still healthy. If I go to bounce up like that, the wave is still there, but it's a lot looser. And that's exactly how you want it to be. Especially because this was such a tight perm, you might not get 100% straight, but if you manipulate it enough, you can remove quite a bit of the curl, which is exactly uh, what I have done right here with this mannequin and you can always apply with the back of the comb to get the solution back on it. I'm gonna rinse this for five minutes in the sink, warm water, you wanna get all the solution out, so always use warm water, sniff it to make sure if it smells like perm solution still in it, keep rinsing. Five is a minimum, five minutes of rinsing, again, not four minutes and 59 seconds, not three minutes, not two minutes, five whole minutes. It is a tedious process. It is a little bit easier because the hair is not in rollers, so that makes it much more uh, easier to rinse. You're gonna then apply the neutralizer, which is in that bottle right there, at the shampoo bowl, very simple. Comb that through, make sure the hair is combed straight, leave the hair in a straight position. Five minutes of processing with the neutralizer, five minutes of rinsing with the neutralizer. I'm gonna do that and come back when she's all finished processing. Okay, for this demo, I'm gonna be doing something a little risky, and that's why I'm glad I'm doing different quadrants. So as you can see, the Thio Smoother had worked pretty well. It uh, relaxed a good amount of the curl, but it's still manageable, it still has movement, and the client is able to style as needed. And let's say the hair is healthy, wait about two weeks, we can do potentially another Thio to further smooth this, but again, very gradual. Nothing that is gonna put the hair through a wild ride like the relaxer will. So I'm using right here, I'm doing a Maizani um, Butter Blend Relaxer for medium to normal hair. And even though it claims to have cocoa butter, honey, and shea butter, 
It doesn't matter how many amazing ingredients they put in this, it is still a relaxer, it is still lye, it is still a very caustic chemical that can burn you, can cause breakage, and cause a lawsuit. Now, me personally, working with curly hair, having curly hair myself, I'm very um, biased with this. I personally will always go the thio route, route any time uh, over a sodium hydroxide. I am not a fan of sodium hydroxide. I'm not a fan of no wire relaxers. I am not a fan of relaxers in general because once you hit the hair with them, it so badly changes the hair with the pH. Some of them are a pH of 14. And what happens is that inside of the hair shaft, a piece of sulfur literally blows out of the hair and it causes a lanthionine bond. And a lanthionine bond is a very weak bond and it is so weak that hair color, peroxide, thio, anything that touches hair after a hydroxide relaxer can cause massive damage and breakage, even with a very low volume developer. So my theory here is, again, I've seen this done on YouTube. I have to link the video down below. This really awesome YouTuber uh, did a hydroxide relaxer on her hair after getting a perm with thio. And I know people are probably freaking out, but my theory is that because thio is such a gentle chemical, you can put a relaxer over a thio, not that you ever should, but you should never put thio over a relaxer because of how it changes the hair. My theory is that if all goes well at best, she's gonna have a uh, limp hair. It might not be 100% straight because especially with a relaxer, you never ever wanna smooth 100%. And at worst, she'll have massive breakage. So I'm gonna go apply the relaxer. And this chemical should be in the hair no longer than anywhere from five to 10 minutes. And even then it's pushing it because the hair has already been color treated and chemically treated. So fingers crossed we don't have massive breakage with this. We're gonna rinse the hair. And again, you never ever neutralize a hydroxide relaxer with peroxide of any kind. You normalize the hair using an acidic shampoo. And it's a very thick cream. This chemical, by the way, is pretty much uh, Drano, just so y'all know that. Not many people do. And again, you would also want to base the scalp uh, with this relaxer, but since this is a mannequin, we don't have to worry about her scalp burning. In fact, this client right here is totally fine with it. Despite we might give her a life-changing chemical cut if this goes wrong. And you don't want to be aggressive with this product, just get it on there. This is a lot creamier compared to the, uh, the relaxer with Thio. And again, with this product, you want to make sure that you are with the client 24 seven. You do not ever want to abandon the client. And always wear gloves with this product. This will burn your skin badly. What I like a lot about this product is that the consistency of it is very nice. It keeps the hair super, super, super straight, which is good as it's chemically straightening it. Again, you want to get on there quickly. You can also use the back of a comb for this, but I prefer to use a brush.
and after you do the relaxer, uh, you always want to make sure that you are not being aggressive with the hair. Do a roller set, do something without heat, preferably. I know people try to break the rules with this and they try to do their own modern techniques, but again, do so at your own risk. This chemical is no joke. A relaxer fail is something I would not wish on my worst enemy because it's just detrimental. I've witnessed so many people go wrong with this chemical. And another thing too is that you do this on dry hair. You do not ever do this on freshly shampooed clean hair. I would even do a nice get pure treatment on someone and send them home for about a week. The more buildup, the better. Granted, you don't want any heavy metal buildup in the hair, but you know, products. Actually, no, I take that back with products. I don't care if they have gel in their hair. It's probably not a good idea, but this product is so strong, it will probably eat right through that. Looks like we're already getting some straight results. So I'm just gonna hurry up with this product application. It's crazy because a relaxer was actually discovered um, by a factory worker, he actually put the relaxer on wool and noticed that, oh wow, relaxer on wool um, smooths it. And little did he know what he just discovered, um, the chemical process of lanthionization. And it became a very common product for people with curly hair. So it's been about three minutes or so. I'm gonna keep checking. And again, I do not want 100% straight hair because that will result in mush, a chemical melted mush. Something that we do not want. All right, so I'm gonna go process and come back after I rinse and normalize. Okay, so this is the result after using the sodium hydroxide relaxer on the hair that was permed too tightly. And I probably should have started in the middle and left it on a little bit longer and then it had applied throughout, but because I had a hunch that the hair was very compromised, I wanted to get the chemical on and off extremely quickly because this chemical is no joke, especially on previously treated hair. And I'm actually glad I did that because it did relax the curl quite a bit. And again, remember the key is that you never wanna make the hair 100% straight because the hair will not hold its own weight and it gums off and snaps off. I actually had a little bit of hair that was left over in the bowl and it completely broke off. And you can see right here that when I applied the relaxer, the middle part didn't really relax as enough as where the ends did and the top is. So I could probably very, very carefully go back in there with the relaxer and I would even say no more than two minutes, but I do not want to even risk it because of how compromised the hair is. Uh, even when rinsing this and I left this on for not even kidding about five minutes, I noticed a slight gummy feel um, on a hair strand. I'm like, okay, we're taking this off immediately so it doesn't melt. And I had a little bit of shedding, but not a crazy amount. So compare that to hair that had a thio done, a gentle thio, and you can see a huge difference. Hey y'all, for this next section, I'm gonna be doing the jerry curl. So the Jerry Curl, or in this case, the Wave Nouveau, is a three-part perming system, and it is a mixture of a low-grade thio cream. So again, we use thio here. It's a low-grade thio cream that you use to take out the curl. Then you wrap the hair on perm rods or some kind of tool like the spiral perm rods or the bendy rods, flexi rods. And then you uh, put more of the second solution, which is 
the uh, booster or the transformer. This is a low grade thio as well. You're gonna squirt it on. You're gonna lotion wrap with that after you rinse the first part out. And then you're gonna use a neutralizer. You're gonna squirt it on the rods, much like you would a perm. And uh, the timings are on both of these things. I know for the cream, it is no more than 15 minutes. But again, you have to keep checking until sufficient curl is relaxed. And with this one, I believe you uh, do not process any longer than 10 minutes. And you keep checking for the S pattern because every uh, hair type is different. This is made to be used on natural hair. Do not ever use a Wave Nouveau on hair that's been treated with a sodium hydroxide relaxer or massive damage occurs. So I'm gonna, my theory on this is that because this hair has already been permed, it will be a lot more forgiving than the relaxer, which was a bit of a failure and that you will see that you can get a different size with the curl. You're gonna make it more uh, transformable compared to the regular thio. Now I'm using two different perm rods. I'm gonna be using peach and I'm gonna be using the green rods to show y'all the different types of textures that you can get using different rods and to see if maybe it works. So I'm gonna get started by applying the chemical. All right, so as you can see, um, I started, the product is a pink texture, I mean, not a pink texture, <laughs> that was a funny fail. A pink color in uh, nature, it smells horrific, and I'm gonna apply it just like you would a virgin application. I'm going to apply it, because I just want this hair to be as smooth as possible, and I noticed that with a thio, I applied it in one big swoop, uh, when normally on virgin hair, you apply it right in the center. So I'm gonna do that just so the center can have more time to cook. Flip over. And I'm gonna keep going through until I get everything saturated with this product. Taking about half inch partings because I really want good saturation. Just like so. And if you can, you split up the hair like so. Don't try to force a large glob because that will cause it to run and potentially cause breakage. And oh, I forgot to mention too with this product, just like a perm, you would actually clarify the hair with the clarifying shampoo. You can use a pre-wrap if you need to. That's what I did, just to equalize porosity. Kind of covers your bases in case the hair is a little more on the um, broken side. Because nobody wants broken follicles. Ooh, man, this stinks. I also want to add too, because from the get-go, um, I've always made um, face coverings optional when I was doing hair, especially because when you're working with caustic chemicals like this, any kind of mask, especially those that have a cloth in them, can absorb the chemical and cause a nasty chemical burn if you're not careful. I've actually seen a Facebook post that happened to some woman who had uh, face coverings at her salon that they required and it caused uh, a bad, really bad chemical burn on the client. Okay, so I'm going to keep applying this. I'm just gonna be quick about this too, because this is a chemical. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be applying this chemical to the sides of the hair, make sure I get that all uh, in there, everything smoothed, and the ends. And again, because this is a perm chemical, if your client has 
uh, hair color, it will fade. Just a FYI, even if you do things correctly. So I wanna get that settled there. What I'm probably gonna do is I will do this to buffer the hair so I don't damage hair that I treated with any other chemical over here. Another thing really quick, if any of you all decide to donate money to me through the membership, please do because all that money will be going towards purchasing new mannequins because as the price of everything keeps up, I kind of have to make do with what I have. And, um, you know, things are expensive. And you can already see the curls starting to relax a little bit, so I'm gonna really speed up with this. and apply to the porous ends as well. And with the Jerry Curl, which is a very common curl, it was made by Jerry Redding, uh, also one of the co-founders of Redkin. I believe um, this product it was a chemical product like the perm, but it also was a technique that he kind of invented. And the whole idea with the jerry curl was you'd be also saturating the hair with a bit of silicone and you know heavy dimethicone products. And that would give this hair like this oily, uh, shiny appearance. With a modern jerry curl, you don't have to do that if you don't want, because I know sometimes just like the perm, a lot of these you know more vintage techniques can be modified to fit today's styles, make them more customizable. I love using the uh, the Jerry Curl, the modernized version, to do a mullet. So people who have uh, very texturized hair can enjoy a mullet. So I'm gonna apply this on here. I'm gonna finish applying. I'm gonna wait for the curl to be relaxed. I don't wanna exceed 15 minutes. And then after I am going to rinse for 10 minutes, about five to 10 minutes, and then I'm gonna wrap the hair in the rods, apply the booster, and then neutralize. So I'll see you all for that. Okay, so I actually processed the shape release and I actually did the full 15 minutes because the hair was resistant. And this is what you want the hair to be. So if you push up on the hair, you don't want it to form any S shapes or waves or bounce back. It is actually pretty healthy still. It is pretty vibrant. The mannequin actually did have hair color and the hair color did fade a decent amount. Um, both the artificial color I put in as well as the color that the company had. But I will say that even though the product smells really bad and funny, <laughs> funny story, my mom was tearing apart the house thinking the dog hadn't took a dump in the house. Um, Cause our puppy uh, for the most part was good, but <laughs> that's how bad the chemical smells. So anyhow, what you're gonna do now at this step is the hair, um, you're gonna take step two. You're gonna apply step two uh, in any section you're doing this on. And then you're gonna take the rods and you're gonna wrap the hair. Now I personally, if you're using, um, a regular crokinole technique, you're gonna do the double flat wrap. I'm not a big fan of being lazy here because if you mess up, you can mess up permanently because you gotta remember, you're rearranging the bonds. If you're using the spiral wrap, you can do a uh, double bookend, not double bookend, the bookend wrap. And if you're very careful, you can try the single flat wrap, but honestly, I have not seen uh, much of a use for that technique at all. So I'm gonna start this off. I'm gonna section the hair up like so. Also, I wanna make sure I towel blot. And the goal here is that ready, if the hair is too curly, you just wanna knock those curls out. So this is actually a lot better than the, the thio smoother. I think that this chemical has a higher pH, hence why there is a better result than the color safe uh, thio smoother. So I'm gonna take the hair like so, clip it up. I'm gonna take number two, which is the shape release. And again, this is like, this is thio, but in a gel form. And I'm really just going to work that into the hair.
and just gently work it through. You don't want it um, spilling anywhere. Just a little goes a long way. Make sure it is dispersed evenly throughout. And after you get the hair all wrapped in the rods, you're gonna process it for 10 minutes. Again, if you feel like you need to, make sure you do the test curl and check the test curl every uh, few minutes until a processing time of 10 minutes has been reached. And you wanna see the nice S shape. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get started. I'm gonna take a section like so. And I'm gonna start this off using Here at 90 degrees from where it grows. Get my other end paper. And again, always wrap down. I'm gonna try it with a few different sizes just so y'all can see what to expect. And make sure the rod's always in the center. So I'm gonna take the next section I'm gonna apply just a little bit more booster. And then also what you wanna do is after you wrap, you wanna apply booster on top like so to make sure that you have good saturation. And again, work quickly and efficiently because this is a chemical. And these follow the same wrapping procedures as a perm does. You want to make sure that you get each section uh, measured correctly. And the goal here is what you're doing now is you're breaking down the bonds to adhere to the new shape. In this case, it is the perm rod. And that one is actually perfect. And with any perm rod, you always wanna make sure you can rock on the rod. You never want the perm rod to be super tight in the scalp because that will cause breakage. I love this technique and it's just a shame that they don't really teach this um, in cosmetology school. Granted, um, not many people come in asking for a jerry curl anymore, but as trends are shifting and people want a more manageable um, natural look because sometimes natural hair can be uh, you know, difficult to handle and you might want something that's a little bit more um, you know, nicer and like fashion forward. This is just a wonderful option. And you always want to wear gloves with this because remember, thio is a chemical and you can still have a lot of, um, you know, bad reactions if you use the chemical wrong. You can add a little bit of booster. I kind of wish they'd make a brand that was thio free and like make, maybe make a brand that is, you know, safe for a little bit more damaged hair, bleached hair, you know, that kind of thing. And the principles of perming are all the same with this kind of uh, chemical service. Uh, again, you know, the whole idea that you want nice tension when you're wrapping, 
You don't want to stress the hair out any more than you need to. And you can have fun with this. I always say experiment, try different sizes, see uh, what rods you like better. I know with the, um, with the peach rods, they produce one of my favorite textures. And I'm also excited to see how some of the bigger rods will work. I'm going to start segueing into the bigger rods to see what kind of curl or wave that will produce. And again, always remember you want the diameter of the rod and no bigger than the size of it. So about this big for that rod. Because this hair is on the side here, I'm going to put a peach rod in. And this technique where you're putting on perm solution and wrapping is actually known as lotion wrapping. I know that traditional lotion wrapping, he would be, um, what is it, you'd be applying it with a uh, perm solution on dry hair, and that's typically used only for the most resistant hair, which again, um, I know a lot of people get surprised when I say this, is only a small amount of the population. Uh, not everyone needs the maximum processing time for any chemical service. It's actually very rare. Um, that's one thing I tell my students all the time as well, especially when they're going off, you know, for chemical relaxing, which is a different service. You really wanna be careful, and because this section's too big, I'm gonna split this into two. You don't want to, you know, bunch too much hair on the rod because that will not produce a nice result. And you always want the ends to be smooth and the consistency of the booster makes that possible to really make sure that the hair is not super, super tight. And again, like a regular perm, you're going to want to cover the hair. You're going to want to make sure that uh, the product does not dry out. If you let the booster dry out, you're going to uh, compromise yourself with the surface. And that's the nice thing with mannequins that not only lets you hone your skills, but it lets you see, you know, what to expect with this chemical and the size of the rods. There is nothing on here with the product being a true to rod size. Um, but again, because this is a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, a two, two, three part perming system with the 
you know, double dose of the chemical service, I don't think you're necessarily going to see, um, uh, you know, a massive change. We do get a little more booster here. And again, what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna apply booster to each rod. And that will be that. And again, you can always put cotton around the client's face if you so choose. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna finish applying booster to each rod. And again, just like you're processing a perm, really make sure you get each rod saturated with the product. And process for 10 minutes and cover with a cap. Okay, so here is what the S-shaped pattern is gonna look like. That is on the directions of the Wave Nouveau. You're gonna undo the rod, and you never ever wanna take the rod out completely, because if you do that, that will cause pretty much just damaged hair. So one, two, push up a little bit, and you'll see how the hair starts to rope. That is the S-shaped pattern that you want. If you're using an acid wave, it's gonna be more of a C-shape. It's gonna be a lot lighter. And I probably should've used picks with this, so when you neutralize, it's gonna be 10 minutes of the neutralizer on. You're gonna rinse for one to two minutes. I do uh, lukewarm water and then I just finish with, with a cool rinse to lock everything in. So I'm gonna start by taking out some of these rods. And what makes it easier is to just take your paper like this, put it off to the side and your rod on the towel. And you're gonna give your rods a rinse after. And again, the manufacturer says that after you have this done, you do not want to shampoo for about 48 hours. I would say go a little bit longer if you can. If you shampoo immediately after, you're just going to end up with damaged hair, broken down damaged hair. And I can definitely see that with this procedure, it gave a better result than just the thio. It was more efficient. I'm gonna come back when this is all air dried. Hey y'all, so this is gonna be the last uh, experiment that I'm gonna do on this mannequin if I don't decide to do a keratin treatment. So what happened um, with this mannequin is, again, it was too tightly permed and the model wants to go straight. So here's how you can actually get straight hair. We've already seen a thio relaxer. Guess it's in a perm. Ding, ding, you guessed it, thioglycolic acid. So what I'm gonna be doing to remove a tight perm is use another perm. I'm using Quantum Firm Options uh, Cold Wave. This is an alkaline perm. And again, you don't have to go you know, too fancy here. This is a very old technique. What you're doing is you're taking the waving lotion. And in this case, I'm actually gonna lotion wrap the hair. And what that means is I'm gonna take the perm, spray it on the hair with gloves, of course, pull it down, I'm gonna be very gentle because back in the 80s, the one technique for straightening too curly hair 
was to spray on Thaya with the shampoo bowl and just tear through it with the brush until it was straight. It was a very torturous, very stinky process, potentially hazardous. The client had to wear a towel over their face. It was just a whole mess because um, you want to drip and it just got everywhere. Well, in this case, I'm going over the sink. I'm going to be squirting this on and I'm going to be gently combing. And when my comb is able to gently get through, I've removed a sufficient amount of curl. Remember, this is basically overprocessing a perm because if you overperm, the hair becomes straight. Now, I don't want to overprocess to where the hair is going to become what we call sink curls or pocket curls, meaning the curl just comes right off the head and you have to hide it in your pocket so the client doesn't see it. That is what we don't want. So I'm assuming that this will probably be ready in about five or 10 minutes because a cold wave is a little bit more aggressive. Now, theoretically, if the client's hair was more compromised, I would say do a thio-free perm. That's more forgiving, more gentle to the hair or an acid wave, uh, depending on the situation. I would not do this technique with uh, an ammonia-free perm, especially if the client has MEA in her hair because that will reactivate and break. And I would not do this with a, an exothermic or a, um, what's what I'm looking for? A uh, endothermic perm, two of those, because exothermic might be too harsh. Endothermic perm where you need a dryer, bad idea because you're gonna have the client be dripping perm solution everywhere. So again, basic cold wave works just as well. Process it to the curl is out of the hair. Rinse it with uh, water. Towel blot, neutralize the hair with the neutralizer for five minutes. Rinse the hair, style as you see fit. Again, remember you're looking for smooth hair. So I will come back when this is all finished. Okay, so this is the finished result after using the perm. This was just basic cold waving perm solution. From Zotos, I simply took the perm and very carefully squirted it on the hair very quickly and waited about five minutes. I gently started combing. I did not force the comb through if it wasn't gonna go through, but I noticed that the ends started to loosen up. I was able to get the comb farther and farther up. I processed the perm for the full time. I think it was 20 or 25 minutes, it was up there. And once all the curl was removed, I immediately rinsed it. There was a slight wave, but again, I wasn't gonna to try to get the hair 100% straight because if you do that, the hair gets really gummy and gross and it falls out. So I removed um, just about all the curl. After I rinsed for five minutes of warm water, making sure I got all the perm solution out of there, I went back in and I uh, just towel dried and I squirted on the neutralizer. I combed that through. I made sure I kept combing the hair to make it in a nice straight position because remember neutralizer rebonds and if the hair is kinked in any way, that will show when it reforms. Left the neutralizer on for five minutes. Uh, once the whole perm smell dissipated, I rinsed for five minutes and then I blue dry the hair. I styled it with uh, just a blow dryer, not even a flat iron, and look how smooth that is. This is not even straightened with an iron. That is practically 100% straight. It feels very healthy, it has shine to it. It does not feel damaged at all. Now if you compare this hair to the Thio Relaxer, which is not even sufficiently relaxed, this feels a lot more uh, horrible. And the Relaxer, the sodium hydroxide, the hair has almost no life. It's lackluster, it feels brittle. This would have overprocessed. If I had left the relaxer on, I would have had mush. Some of the ends even broke. Look at how crazy this is. Just with the basic perm solution, you get better results. I don't know why that is. My theory is because it's a liquid, it's more viscous. So you get more uh, control over the whole uh, perm solution. I mean, at the, the uh, style, as opposed to the cream, which the cream, you have to really force it in there and rub it in there, and even then it's no guarantee. And this also is the second best, the, uh, the jerry curl. And I put a little mousse in there to style it, and I did tighter rods up front into peach rods, and then underneath I used the big green ones to reform the hair. The hair feels very healthy, it's not broken at all. It does have a slight um, odor to it, but that comes out with shampooing. So again, if you have an overprocessed perm, Thio is definitely the way to go, but as determined, uh, the Jerry Curl seems to be the best choice if you want a more weighty, less tight look. And if you want more of a straight look, simple old technique from the 1980s, taking the cold wave of the shampoo bowl, squirting it on the hair very carefully, and very gently combing it through until the curls are removed, rinsing and neutralizing. So definitely the two winners in my book. Um, comment down below which one you think is the best. I, I love doing this where I take the mannequins and I can do different quadrants. 
The relaxer I did not like because the hair's integrity was compromised and it just didn't look or feel good. And the Thio relaxer, the cream one, just wasn't sufficient enough to relax all the curls. I might go and try a keratin treatment on this to see if that will do anything, but I doubt it. So that is it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed this. Please, uh, can please subscribe to my channel if you like these videos. Please like, please comment, please uh, share these videos. I want to help you all learn the science of the wonderful industry we're in. And if you want to support me, please get a subscription. Now I'm kind of doing it like this. My subscriptions will work in that all the money that I make from the subscriptions, I'll be putting it towards buying new mannequins, buying products so I can do demos like this. And I'll be doing my best to accommodate everyone's requests. So please everyone have a happy Easter and I will see y'all soon. I'm gonna probably take this mannequin and do a keratin treatment on that one section. And then after that, I'm gonna go in and try bleach. Bleach in 10 volume on each quadrant and see what happens.